Hello, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share with you my unboxing and review of the Gucci Diana mini tote. I first learned about this bag when I read the Gucci book, which by the way, was incredible. I don't know if you've seen the movie or not. The book goes into so much more detail than the movie does. It is very fascinating if you love a good kind of family dynasty type of book. I love Gucci. I have a couple of Gucci belts, but I've never actually owned a bag. As I said, I have to shop for my annual spring designer bag, which I'd love to do kind of when the weather changes is treat myself to a bag that I really love. It just simply wasn't on my radar. I wasn't thinking Gucci at all. I had my sights set on a couple of Dior's as well as a Louis Vuitton. My sister-in-law swears by Fashion File. I had actually never shot from them and she sent me a link for Fashion File for a Louis Vuitton. It was a little, it was a little Louis bag. I'll put it up on the screen. I can't remember what it's called because I really love her bag. So she sent me the link, carded it. And I said, maybe I'll come back to it. The way that Fashion File works, and I think the reason it does great is because it's very, very deliberate in the categorizations of the status of the bag. So it's giftable. That means like it's better than new, right? It's giftable new, which was the state of my bag. Then there's like great, good, fair. And then I think there's another level below. And so it kind of dictates what is wrong with it. And it's very explicit as to like, with it like is it scratches is it marks is it a musty smell whatever it might be and for me i was like wow i'm getting a few hundred dollars off of this toe it's also in new condition which is crazy and every bag there and actually for for all of these sites they're all authenticated so if you're ever nervous about getting a bag on these sites i think it is very very safe in the case that you do end up getting a fraudulent item i have never had a hard time returning it because it's happened to me twice and opening this up the real Gucci dust bag comes in there, which is great because you always want to keep that in case you want to resell it. People always ask if you still have the duster bag. And I think that it automatically diminishes a little bit in kind of the perceived value if you don't. So it's nice to hang on to those and to also get one with your purchase. And then there's a lot of paperwork in here about the real Gucci, which is good right here. And the inside is what you see is what you get. Like you don't have any zippers, you don't have any pockets, no kind of co compartments or anything like that. No zip pocket on the side to kind of tuck a card in. It is a little bit of a liability or a pet peeve of mine to not have anything zipper here and to just have a little clasp. Maybe you'll, you might lose a lipstick or something like that. You definitely don't want to pop in like cash or cards that are just going to slip through. But if you carry your cards and your money in a wallet, they get a good card holder or something like that. I think it's going to be totally fine as well as your phone. But yes, I do do love bags that have a nice little safety zipper because it makes me feel so much more confident. So this is the cute little strap. You can adjust it if, given your height or how you want to do a cross body or just kind of under the shoulder type thing. And I love that because even though it is beautiful, it's just kind of hold it like this, like very ladylike. Sometimes it's nice while you're walking around or you're just kind of on the go, you have your hands full just to be able to strap it over. The straps here are a curiosity to me because they, I think they're so cute. I love pops of color in something like this. And I think the combination just looks super luxurious. These are sold separately. So you, I could in theory get in the hot pink and the neon green colors that they have. It came with these neon orange straps and they fall off pretty easily. So you definitely want to make sure that you buckle it nice and tightly around. The reason for these little straps, again, they have their own little seatbelt or something, is the, it apparently helps the handle keep its shape, the bamboo. So I don't know if that's true or not. I think they look super adorable. You can see how they could be very easy to lose if you don't, you know, if you don't do a good job of tightening them around. Uh, but they kind of just add that whole kind of luxurious element of extra, the equivalent of putting like a scarf around the handles or something like that. The toes come in a mini, a small, and a medium. And the medium one, which is the very largest one, I, it looks to me to be the equivalent of the Givenchy Antigona, which I wear all the time to travel in, all the time. It's like my go-to travel bag. I love it and it doesn't scratch at all. It, it's amazing. And I have that, and I also have the Celine Phantom, which is a very similar shape. And I just felt like I wanted something a little bit smaller. And then having medium-sized bags in other makes, I just wanted a very ladylike small bag that was neutral. Little bags are super trendy for, for 2022. 
I just think that for me, like to get a Jacquemus, a very tiny mulberry is just not what I'm looking for right now. I also recently checked out the Balenciaga handle bag as well as the Love, the, the oddly shaped kind of like a little futuristic spaceship. I did check that one out at Saks recently and I just didn't like the way the zipper, I thought it was very complicated. So I didn't, didn't feel ergonomic to me. So this one was definitely more of a ladylike statement and I love the idea of just being able to kind of throw things in there. I'll fit my phone, my wallet, you know, a couple of other extra things, maybe my inhaler, but it's just a really good size. And I think if you're looking for something that just fits a little bit more, maybe like the Balenciaga City bag, or even like a double flap Chanel, I think maybe the small one is a good size for you, but I didn't want that in between. I really did want something either bigger or smaller. And so here it is. So let me show you a few different ways of how I plan to wear it this spring. And maybe it'll give you some outfit inspiration for your bag so that you can kind of see it and how it can be worn a few different ways. This kind of outfit is one that I expect to be wearing a lot this spring. Puff sleeves are very, very trendy for spring 2022. And so therefore combining it in a little easy midi dress is just an outfit that I know I'm gonna wear a lot. So it goes really well with kind of a casual vibe, but it also makes it dressy as well. This beautiful maxi satin dress is from H&M and it's a little bit dressier, but you can also kind of picture in the movement and silhouette how it would look with a beach cover up as well. This very easy t-shirt dress is just a great go-to look for spring and summer. Paired with ballet flats and the Diana tote is just the perfect complement for such an easy outfit. A blazer and jeans look is an all-time favorite outfit in any variation. And I'm wearing it here with a Zara blazer and wide leg jeans and an H&M silky top. So this is an instance where I would leave the strap on in case I'm walking somewhere and also kind of carry it in the handle bag for a more ladylike look. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more fashion and styling videos. I also publish a styling video every day on my shorts playlist in case you need styling ideas that are really, really timely and seasonal. I hope to see you really soon and have a great day.